Hello. Today I'll be discussing this recent blog post I did uh, last April 29, which is about the synchronous processing with Go using Kafka and MongoDB. In my previous blog post, I created this microservice that accepts uh, HTTP requests and saves the data it receives to MongoDB. So it's a very straightforward and simple application that I, I created. So for this example, I decoupled the receiving of data and saving to MongoDB into two different microservices. So the first microservice receives the request from, from the client. So in our, in our demo later, I'll show you that we're using Postman. You could also use curl to, to do this. So it receives a post request from a client and saves the data that it receives to Kafka. So after saving to Kafka, the data is, just sits there. Then in the second microservice, the second microservice retrieves the data from Kafka and saves the data to, to MongoDB. So I elaborated on this in my blog. Before we proceed, we need a few things uh, to be able to run the, the demo. So first is you need to download Kafka. You could follow the links in my, in my blog. Then you need to install the LiveRD Kafka to your, to your machine. Then you install the Kafka Go client by Confluent. So the installation of the Go client is basically uh, importing into your application and downloading the dependency. So after that, you need to run MongoDB. We have a uh, Docker file which I created, which we can use. So you can just do a Docker compose up when, when spinning up the MongoDB instance as a container. So let's try it out. So let's get rolling. I already have Kafka here in my in my machine. So I installed it in my applications directory. So if you see I'm using Kafka 2.11-1.1.0 which you could download from, from the Kafka website. So I'm using this version. So just download it and extract it in your applications folder and that's it. You of course you need to have your JVM uh, installed as well. So after that, uh, you need to run Zookeeper first before you can run Kafka. So I'm just using the default Zookeeper properties that comes with it. So if you notice, I didn't change anything and it's still using the default port of Zookeeper, which is 2181. So to run Zookeeper, just uh, do this command. And once you see it's binding to the port 2181, it's already running. So now we can, we can run Kafka. So I also didn't change anything in the Kafka configuration, so you could just run it as well. Okay, so we have uh, Kafka running. So now we need to run MongoDB as well. So I have a Docker file of MongoDB here. So if you notice, it's a very simple Docker file which basically runs MongoDB as a container in 27017 port and binds it to the target host, which is our machine, in the same port. Then we are creating a volume named MongoData and mounting the, binding it to the directory of the container which is slash data slash uh, db. So optionally, we could also create a network. So right now I'm running it. I am using network one as the network. So if you see, we are not running any container now. So what we do is we just run this MongoDB uh, image.
Yeah, so if you see it's waiting for connections uh, in this port, it's already ready. So now to check if you're able to connect to MongoDB, you need to configure your Mongo client. Like for me, for instance, I'm using uh, RoboMongo. So you just input the properties here. So I'll show you how to do that. So if you go here and edit. So you just connect to the port where MongoDB is running in Docker. So to check that port, you need to see where the where the port is binded to in the target host. So that's it. So now we have uh, MongoDB running. So now we, we will try to connect to, to MongoDB. So I haven't really added some authentication so you could just connect to MongoDB. So let's just clear out this other connections. So if you notice, I already have the same, uh, this jobs uh, collection which I previously created. I think this has data. So you could actually clear the data, remove all the documents from, from the collection. This is clean. Right, so now we don't have any data in the, the MongoDB database. All right. So now we have uh, Kafka running, MongoDB running. I'll show you the code that I created for this. So the first microservice is the, ser the microservice that receives HTTP request from a client. So in the main function of that microservice, we have a uh, we created a router using a uh, Gorilla Max. Right then we have a handler for it, which is the jobs post handler. So if you notice that the jobs post handler receives the request, so now we are actually taking the reading the the data from the request body, right? So we're also doing a differ. So later on, after the function finishes all its processing, it will call this uh, body that close, which is uh, just to clean it up. Yep. So when, so after that, we marsh we unmarshal the the data from from the request into a job struct which we created here. Then we save the, the job struct to, to Kafka. So before saving, we also need to, to marshal it so it becomes a string and save it to Kafka. So here we're connecting to uh, localhost 1992, which is the default port of uh, Kafka. Just note that we are not running Kafka in Docker, so we are just running it as a, a standalone application. So we are also saving the data to jobs topic one here. And just using the default uh, parameters. So that's the first uh, microservice. So we'll see if, uh, let's try to run this uh, microservice. Okay, so now if you don't get any errors, most probably it's running. So we now try to do a post to the to the microservice, just to show you that what port I'm using. I'm using for this microservice. I'm using port ninety ninety as the the port. So in our postman, or you could also use curl. You can send data to this uh, to this uh, microservice using this port. All right, so maybe we create a principal software engineer position should be experienced with Golang and maybe Docker. Maybe this position is for Google, for example, and salaries maybe is around thirty k. It's probably per month. So if you 
we do a we send it to the microservice so it will just return back the the data we sent it to right so in our mongodb our first microservice saves the data to mongodb right so in mongodb now we will check if the data is actually received so we don't see any data here okay sorry so the first microservice is actually saving to kafka not sending to the to mongodb since this was actually the first application i i created so it's just saving to kafka so to check if it's saved in kafka we can run a consumer to the topic that we save the data to all right so we could wait a bit and this consumer will will actually get the data from from kafka or maybe not right so let's send another data to to the microservice let's make it for maybe for yeah for google also but like a higher salary All right so let's make this a senior software engineer make this uh, let's make this alphabet for example. All right. So once we send it there, uh, we will see that it's actually consumed in, in, in this one is a consumer that connects to Kafka directly. We see that the data that we sent to this microservice is actually saved into Kafka. So since we, we send the data previously and run, we're not running a consumer uh, this the offset is already in the it is not uh, in the latest offset so we are not able to see the previous one that what we did right so now we see it's uh, in Kafka so now we I'll show you how the microservice that consumes from Kafka and sends saves to MongoDB looks like so in this uh, microservice, uh, we connect to Mongo using the this Mongo client that we have. We initialize a connection, a session, sorry, right, using this uh, information. Right, so we are using this configuration, sorry, not this. Yeah, so this configuration of MongoDB. And connecting to it so we now receive from Kafka so this is where the data is received from Kafka then saved to MongoDB right so we receive from Kafka so we connect to Kafka using using this configuration which is connecting to uh, port 1992 as well then we are subscribing to the jobs topic one which we created uh, we didn't create, but it's really automatically created when, when you s save a uh, data to, to a topic. Right, so now we'll try to run this uh, example. So now we can just shut down this uh, first microservice. And we can, ra we can run this other microservice. Right. So now, since this is a new uh, new consumer, and we are we are reading from from the the start from the beginning, right? So we will see that the initial data that we sent, we are able to also retrieve, right? And this will be saved into MongoDB. So I hope this works. So if we see after receiving from kafka we print this uh, log so receive from kafka then we save to mongodb going to this uh, method so we just get the data and save and marshal it and save to, to to mongodb so we do an insert here right so if it works uh, we will see it in mongodb right so we are now here in mongodb let's check if it was saved so okay cool 
right? So we, we see both data that we, we sent to the initial microservice and we see both here. So that's it. So our, our example is uh, running. So just to note that we shut down the other service and we were still able to save to MongoDB. So we are decoupling the, the, the concerns. So the first one is receive the data first and save to Kafka and the processing or the consumption of the message is uh, delegated to another microservice. So that's it. So I hope you find the article useful, right? And uh, you can follow me in Twitter. So my handle is uh, at Don Vito. So if you're familiar with Godfather, this is actually where I got it from. Right, in GitHub also it's the same user, so you could actually follow me in GitHub as well. So all the code is in my GitHub in under this Learn Go, Learn Go repository. So where where I put all the, in, the all the, the code that I use to to Learn Go. So I'm also a beginner, so I hope you you find the, the video useful and my article useful. So I'll see you soon next time. Thanks.